morning, Harvest Church. How are we doing this morning? We're so glad you're here to join us as we worship God. And as I said Wednesday night, if you did miss that, we encourage you to get dressed, get up, pretend like you're going out of the house, even if you walk out your front door and come back in and come to your TV set or whatever you're watching on. But enter in, stand up, lift your hands. We had a testimony come through, somebody that was sitting on their couch. And when I encouraged them to stand up, they felt the power of God just fill their their life and give them health and hope in their bodies. And so enter in and treat this like you are going to service. Keep things as normal as possible, even for your mindset. But don't let the enemy allow complacency to come in where you're just using this as a form of almost entertainment. We are worshiping the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He still sits on the throne. He is still in control and he holds the whole world in his hands. And so enter in, clap, shout, run around your house, get everybody involved. We are worshiping the King of Kings and Lord of Lords this morning. Amen. So we implore you to join in and everybody in the room is already standing. Amen. So uh, we love you and here we go. Ready?
chase some belief right out of your house. Come on, sing it now.
some things right now in the spirit because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Somebody say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say this is how I fight my battles. Glory be to God. There's some weird things floating around and we don't have to put up with weird. We are children of a living God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're going to address it today in the spirit as we worship and as we praise. I encourage you, get up off wherever you're sitting and stand to your feet this morning. Lift your hands to a mighty God. He is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Our God is alive. Our God is not surprised by anything that is taking place. God put his spirit on the inside of you. God put his spirit on the inside of me. He made us for war. He created our fingers for battle and our hands for war. Hallelujah. And when we feel like we're surrounded and it does look like we're surrounded right now, but greater is he that's in you and greater is he that's in me. And there's some that have been suffering with bad dreams. Some that have been suffering with terrible fear some of you have been suffering and wondering and have severe anxiety some of you are having insomnia and sleepless nights due to the situation and the circumstance but since when has a believer ever been underneath the circumstance we are more than a conqueror hallelujah glory be to God we are mighty in God we are strong in God we are dead men raisers you're a dead men raiser you're an atmosphere shifter when you go into the store the atmosphere shifts the water parts, hallelujah. Coronavirus moves away in the name of Jesus. We're going to address bad dreams right now. If you're suffering with bad dreams, get as close to your screen as you can and put your hand right on that screen and the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come through and touch you from your head to your feet because I'm here to tell you this morning, there's nothing greater than God. There's nothing greater than the Word of God. There is no assignment from the enemy burped up out of hell to try to take out the human race is not greater than the anointing of God. Jesus went forth into the world. He touched the lepers. He raised the dead. Hallelujah. He healed the sick. And you are a healer. You're a dead men raiser. You're a one that can change where you are, your neighborhood. When you look around at the houses around you, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and say, no weapon formed against these or me shall prosper in Jesus' name. Now just lift up your hands this morning and those that are suffering with those things that were named, come close to the screen. Put your hand on the screen. Not magic, but a point of contact. Hallelujah. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand with you. Hallelujah. Shoto Bosakadaramanda. In Jesus' name, we bind fear. We address you. You're a spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. God said that we would have sweet sleep glory be to God and that we would lay down and we would wake up refreshed we are not of those that are anxious praise the name of Jesus hallelujah no anxiety no fear no weapon formed against you shall prosper we address it now whatsoever we find here woo, glory to God it's bound in your house the presence of God fills up your house right where you are right now and in the name of Jesus everything Everything, everything that is not of God has to get out and go in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to rejoice in Jesus this morning. We're going to continue to worship and praise with the anointing that's in this room right now. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the anointing. God made it so it can be transferable right to where you are today. Get up and do a leap. Get up and do a lap. Run around your house. Go anoint the doorposts. Lay hands on the window. Lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your furniture. Hallelujah. Go lay hands on your refrigerator and say you will never lack anything. The righteous will never be forsaken and their seed begging for bread. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's rejoice in Jesus this morning and glorify his wonderful name. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Nothing, nothing is a strong Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my battles.
fire Now provide the sacrifice You provide the spirit I will open up and say Fill me up never runs dry. Heaven never has any lack. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God sits upon the circle of the earth and there is no shadow of turning with him. There's no searching of his understanding. He's waiting for people to ask him to fill, to fill them up. And we ask the Lord to fill us this morning right where we are, wherever you are right now. Just receive the presence of the Lord in your home, the presence of the Lord wherever you are. Fill us, saturate us. We thank you that we're full to dispense God's glory out through all the earth. We don't want to just be filled to be filled. We want to be filled to be a dispenser wherever we go of God's glory and God's goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. We appreciate you so much. If you want to just stay and play in the background while we get ready to take communion this morning, you can do that or whatever you feel led to do this morning do it. How many of you appreciate the worship and the anointing of God? Hallelujah. We so appreciate that. We're going to take communion together this morning. We're following the instruction of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit put it on our hearts to take communion together. So I encourage you to go get your communion wherever you might be right now. Just get it and get ready to take it together. What a precious vehicle that we're able to come into your homes through live streaming. The anointing is the same. 
there as it is here. I want to read a scripture before we take communion together. If you have your Bible and you want to turn there with me, you can do that. If not, you can just listen. This is what I felt the Lord put on my spirit this morning for us as we take communion. The thing we remember about communion is that Jesus said these words, as often as you do this, which means we could do it as often as we want to. And then he said, remember me. And so this morning, as we take communion together, we want to let our thoughts consider Jesus and consider what he's done for us. And as I, Isaiah 53, there's a lot of uncertainty in the land right now, a lot of things we don't know. But I believe there's more things we do know. And we focus on what we do know. We do know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We do know that he is the changeless one in a shifting world, in a fluid world, they're calling it. God is a rock, hallelujah. He remains the same. And we are stable and fixed, it says in Psalm 91, under the shadow of the Almighty. And so in, in Isaiah 53, what I want us to focus on this morning, thinking about this as we take communion together, it says, surely, in uncertainty, we can come up with a surely. Surely, Isaiah 53 and verse 4, he has borne our griefs, just take what represents the bread, the body of Christ this morning. Take it in your hand. There's an anointing on it. It's not what we're drinking or what we're eating. It's the fact that God said through Jesus Christ to do this. And as soon as we touch it, it becomes anointed. And it's more than enough to meet every need that we have in our life right now. So it says, surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, our distresses, born there means removed far away. So if you're experiencing grief this morning, and I do believe that grief, I believe that grief is stalking our land right now. There's a lot of things that we can't do that we used to do. We can see it as a lot of loss, sorrow, grief, but we have to remember the surely. Jesus carried our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, and our distresses. If you're distressed right now, when we take this cup together, we believe that distress will leave. Amen? And that God will come in in a mighty way, touching our physical body, touching our emotions. We are released from grief right now. We are released from sickness, weakness, distress. He carried our sorrows and pains. If you're in pain today, physical pain, when you take communion, expect that Jesus who took our pain, all these things were part of the curse. We are no longer under that curse, praise God. We are under the covenant of what Jesus did at the cross. He redeemed us from the curse. He bore our sicknesses, our infirmities, our distresses, our sorrows, our pains of punishment. And then it says in verse five, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. There's forgiveness in this cup. If we sin, we ask God to forgive us. We say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me, wash it away. I plead your blood over it. So do that this morning before you take any of the elements. Hallelujah. The chastisement of our peace. If you're struggling and you don't feel peace, I would get my Bible out and I would read this out loud every day and receive peace. We take peace this morning as we take communion. We take peace. Hallelujah. And then it says, and well-being. So he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our guilt and iniquities, the chastisement of our peace and well-being. We can walk through fire, flood, pestilence with a sense of well-being that God is on the throne. Amen? For us upon him. And with his stripes, 
If you have any sickness or disease in your physical body, just receive healing as we take this today. With his stripes, we are healed and made whole. No doubt about it. Let's take this morning the first cup. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just take a moment to take what he's done. Whatever I've read this morning that might be fitting to you, begin to say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for peace. Thank you for healing. I thank you for freedom from pain. Somebody that's in pain right now, the pain is leaving your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, because of the covenant of the blood and the broken body of Jesus, let's drink the second cup this morning. Nico, you are the healed of the Lord, son. And there is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. And the Spirit of the Lord is telling me today, Nico, that you're going to walk through the land from this day forward. And the healing anointing of Jesus Christ to go out and put your hands on those that are suffering, those that are sighing and sorrowful, those that are wheelchair cases, cripples, paralyzed people, people with a death sentence over their life. The anointing of God is on you from the top of your head to your feet to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in Jesus name as your body is in recovery process every time that pain strikes you you just say Isaiah 53 4 and 5 he took my pain and this morning if you're in pain every time you experience that pain you say in Jesus name he took my pain now pain I'm not putting up with you I don't have to. Jesus paid for me to be free, symptom free, pain free. And I speak to you pain to go and do not return in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just thank God right now. Praise you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We praise you. We worship you for all you're doing and all you've done. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, normally at this point of the service, we'd say we're receiving our tithes and offerings. So I just encourage you to get your envelope, your check, your cash, whatever it is that you are going to be sending, bringing, sewing. And first, I want to say thank you. You're an amazing church. We love you so much. People are bringing their tithes to the door. People are mailing their tithes in. We've learned that even in famine, we sow and we will never lack anything. Amen? You've been taught well, and you're doing what you've been taught, and we appreciate that. And so once again today, just take that offering in your hand. If you're by yourself, just lay your hands on it. If you're with somebody, lay your hands on it. Be in agreement this morning that the God of more than enough, hallelujah, He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider, shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. In Jesus' name, we lay our hands on it. We thank you for it, Father. We praise you for the increase, divine protection. We speak a multiplication over the seed sown. We thank you for jobs, for bonuses, for raises, for people that they say are out of work to go back to work. In the name of Jesus Christ, we call it done right now. And we praise you for it. Amen. Amen. I want to just share a testimony with you this morning before our precious friend and brother Tony comes to minister the word to us, especially in these times. This, you're going to be seeing a picture up on the screen, your screen, not this screen. Hallelujah. This comes from Tri-County Care. It says, Dear Harvest Church, we just want to take the time to thank you for, thank you and your volunteer staff for your generosity in this time of need. The Lack family is extremely grateful and pleasantly surprised by the amount of groceries Harvest was able to donate for them. Thank you so much again for Harvest's generosity during this difficult time and for being there to help us make sure our families have all that they need. And Polly told me about this case, that it's a father and a son. Is that right, Polly? father and a son, and they are, they, 
They're not, they're disabled. They're not able to get out of their house. So I believe that picture is up and showing of the groceries that you, because of your sewing, and we were able to provide them with. So praise God for that. Then I just want to read a testimony, talking about our finances this morning, from someone who emailed this in, a member of Harvest Church, single mom. says, so in this time where darkness seems to be all around us, I want to encourage you with the light that surrounds me and my family and all who are in the body of Christ. As everyone knows, people in the restaurant business have been laid off. As I started to fill out my unemployment paperwork that wasn't loading or going through because of so many people trying to apply, the Lord put it on my heart to message my boss. I messaged him, and he asked if I could come in that day. Praise God. After that, I prayed for godly favor, specifically for God to put me on my manager's heart if they needed help. The first week, I had four shifts and made more money than I did as a server. Woo-hoo! Hallelujah! Glory to God. Sounds like God to me. Amen? I have not needed to claim unemployment because of the loss of hours because I'm making more money in less hours now than I would if I was serving. Praise God. He will take care of us because his word says it. Continue to sow. Continue to tithe. And I'm so thankful to be able to give you this report, not to brag, but to give God the glory. Without his word and confessing and believing what it says, this wouldn't be possible. God is no respecter of persons. If he'll do it for me, he will do it for anyone who believes. Amen. Praise God for that. So we just thank God this morning. We want to ask you to send in your praise reports and your prayer requests to keep in touch we're praying for you. We love you. We're thinking about you. We're missing you. And this is only for a season. This too shall pass. Amen. All right. Let's welcome our sweet friend and brother Tony Bowick this morning as he comes to break forth the bread of life to us. Tony, we love you. We appreciate you. We welcome you today. Amen. Good morning. For those that are watching that don't know who this young, bright, <laughs> handsome young man, my name is Tony Bowick. Um, I've been coming to Harvest Church since 2003, so this is my home. I love it here. I love my pastors. I love my, my brothers and sisters in Christ here. It's a great place to worship. This is a place where the Holy Spirit is, is free to move and have his way in doing and being. And that's the type of church that I was looking for when I first came up here. I met Pastor Paul in 96. He came and did a Bible study for us when I played with the Firebirds. And I, it was just, it was something about him. It was something about him. I said, he got character, you funny. I said, he loves sports. Let me go and check him out. <laughs> so I've been here. I, I enjoyed it, and I love being here. And uh, today I hope you be blessed by what the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart. Um, this came to me when I had to be on my back to look up. Because I had gotten to a point in my, in my life that I started thinking and doing and trying to figure things out to my, for myself. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? So when I got out the hospital, Pastor Paul called and he asked me, he said, when you come, you want to sit with, with me and my family on the front row and I said, oh, let me, let, let, me, let me get back with you. And I was sitting in my 
so-called partial man cave that my daughter took over. <laughs> and display came into my, my spirit. <clears throat> so I called Pastor and I told him, I said, no, Pastor, the Holy Spirit told me to be on display. Didn't understand it at that moment. And then I went back to work. And my coworkers was amazed just to see me at work because the surgery that I had was a quadruple bypass surgery. A quadruple bypass surgery where people normally are not back to work three, four, five, six, eight months, maybe a year. And I showed back up to work in three months. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Coming out of surgery, normally you on, I guess what they call the breathing tube or ventilator to help you breathe. <laughs> I came out breathing on my own, and they had to pull it out because it was choking me. They had to take the breathing tube out because it was literally choking me because I was breathing on my own. So I go to my room. I'm laying there. My wife, some of my old teammates, some of my friends at work came by and they looking at me, he was like, you don't even look like you in pain or anything, like you hurting. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> so I'm good. That was the first day. The second day was a little rough. When a battle chooses you, what do you do? When a battle chooses you, not you choosing the battle, but when the battle chooses you. Pastor Paul and Preston called me that night. It was just me and my wife there. I had, I had a high fever that day. A little bit of the pain that sunk in. And I'm talking to Pastor and, and Pastor Paul and Pastor Carolyn. They're praying for me on the phone. And I'm going to let you know something. There's no limit to where the Holy Spirit can reach you. There's no limit to where the Holy Spirit can reach you. Let me say that one more time. There's no limit to where the Holy Spirit can reach you. Woo. That Holy Spirit dug me out of a pit in 19, no, in 2003. I was coming, it's part of my, 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 my original team. Hey, do you know I wore this suit the first time you asked me to come up? I just thought about that. <laughs> I'm driving from Chicago, and the Holy Spirit kept saying, enough, aren't you tired? You know, did all of this. You've been all over the world playing professional football. And I tried to ignore it the whole, it's a 12 hour drive and I tried to ignore it for 12 hours. But it was just persistent. I came home and, and that Sunday I came here. And that was in 2003 and I've never been the same. But there's something about when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. I'm gonna go back to my testimony. But it's something about when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. I got saved at 18. But I didn't get filled with the Holy Spirit in 2003. When I got saved at 18, I was still doing me. So from 18 to 36, it was all about me. 
the power of the Holy Spirit hadn't fell on me then. But when I came here and saw and felt the Holy Spirit move in this place, it fell on me. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to think I was okay. I didn't have to think that, oh, I got to do it my way or I can do it my way and I can still go to church and, and look like I'm, I'm a Christian or I can go here and party and hang out with people and then go home, sober up, <clears throat> sober up between Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and be in church on a Sunday. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. So I'm laying, I'm laying, in, I'm laying in the bed as me and my wife and Pastor Paul and Pastor Carol, and they call and they praying for me. And the more they prayed, now my hands are laying here, I'm on my back. The more they prayed, I started lifting my hands. Started lifting my hands. Then all of a sudden, I was able to raise my hand. This two days after surgery, I still got, listen to me, I still got three tubes in my stomach, in my abs. I got three tubes where they still, they draining the fluid out of me. Three of them. And I'm raising my hand. Now, if you had an uh, um, a abdominal pull or, or a broken rib or something like that, it's hard to breathe, not alone just raise your hand or move or twist or anything like that. It's painful. And Pastor, Carl, Pastor Calvin said that all the thing I could get, I couldn't scream because my abs was too sore, and all I got to do was, whoo, whoo. That's all I could get out, whoo. But I guarantee you, it was the loudest sound in heaven. I guarantee you it was the loudest sound in heaven that they heard that night because it came from here. My abs, I'm, when, they, when, when the, the, I'm jumping ahead, when the nurse came to pull the tubes out, but everybody was telling me that's going to be the painful part. I'm like, I'm an athlete. I done had knee surgery. I done did this. And I done had stingers and concussions and all that. It's going to be a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> so she comes in and I'm sitting and she's like we're getting the tubes out of there I'm like yes so she gets whatever all the material she needed and I'm, I'm sitting there and she got this big old bucket I'm like what does she got this bucket for I'm going to bleed out because it's literally just tubes nothing she had like one, one little stitch that was holding each one of them in so she snipped all three of those, and they were still, I'm thinking, well, that should have fell out then. I'm thinking that was going to be the easy part. But she grabbed all three, all three tubes, and she said, I'm going to count to three. And she got the one, and we never made it to three. And I was like, oh. I just, I, I just had to fold over. They got them out. My next question was after I recuperated from the trauma of the tubes being pulled out, she came back in. She said, how you feeling? I said, I feel okay. She said, are you ready to get up and walk? I said, I was ready to walk yesterday. She was like, all right, do you need help? I said, no. She said, how far you want to go? I said, how far you need me to go? So I get up, I'm walking the hallways, and I'm looking. She was like, you don't feel lightheaded, dizzy, or anything? I was like, no, I'm fine. She was like, wow. Normally people only come out, go out to the door, go to the hallway, and come back because they're so tired. I wasn't walking in my strength. I wasn't walking in my own strength. Something supernatural Something, listen to me, something supernatural was happening to me in that place. So I come back, I'm in the room. My wife, she comes, she comes that day and we, we're there. And the nurse comes in and she was like, I mean, my wife was like, do you, how long do you think we're going to be? How long, you know, you think we'll be at, in the hospital? She said, oh, usually about seven to 10 days, maybe 12, give or take a few. I looked at my wife, I said, ain't no way I'm going to stay in here and eat this hospital food for no seven to ten days. <laughs> I said, in that case, you're going to be doing a lot of carry outs. You're going to be bringing me some Popeye's chicken or something in here. 
<clears throat> so my, one of my good friends, Chad Dukes, came by. He's like, you been walking yet? I was like, nah. He's like, come on, get up and walk. So we got up, we started walking. I'm, I'm walking up and down the hallway three or four times. And people that just had the same surgery that I had looking at me, they, you know how people want to, wow, he's doing really good. So we get back to the room. The doc camp comes that, this is the third day. It's the third day. It's my third day. The doctor comes in with all of his residents, I guess, the young people that are trying to be doctors or whatever, they come in with him. They got their little clipboard out looking all educated. So they come, the doc come in. He said, how you feeling, Tony? I said, right, doc, I feel good. He said, how's your breathing? I said, because I had this thing, I had to breathe in every day to get the ball to go up. By the time the end of the second day, I had the thing full on all the way up to the top. So that was the biggest thing to get my, my, my breathing and my, my lungs going. So he's like, all right, breathe for me. So I did. He was like, wow. He said, you know what? We're going to get you out of here today. I looked at my life. I said, wow. I said, I'm going home today. I'm going home today. So I get out. He comes and, and I get out about four, a little after four that day. And I told my wife, I said, drive by my job. She was like, you, you for real? I was like, yeah. Now, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about anything as far as what the Holy Spirit is saying, go on display. You're on display. So I drive by, my wife drive by, we go by, and people's eyes look like they had popped out their head when they saw me. They said, they, and everybody's saying, there's no way you're right here right now. There's no way you should be sitting in a car going home after three days of a quadruple, a quadruple bypass surgery at 53 years old. You should not be in this car right here, right now. My kids that I deal with, they go, Mr. Boyd, oh, it's so good to see you. I'm glad you're all right, because I haven't been to work, and I don't know how long. They say, oh, I'm so glad to see you right now. And, and they coming by trying to, I said, I can't shake your hand. I had to keep the window up because I didn't want to get any infections or things like that. It's another thing. They say, I got good with everything that's going on. I'm here before all this mess. Woo! God is good all the time. All the time is good to each and every one of us. So I'm, I'm sitting in the car, one of my supervisors, I don't know if you might, I don't know if he was there the night you and Paulie came by, but my immediate supervisor came out and he looked at me and he said, you're a freaking miracle. This, that's what he said. Bro, you're a miracle right now. I said, what are you talking about? He said, bro, you just had surgery three days ago. Your chest was open. Your heart was stopped. For hours at a time, you had a machine helping you breathe, and you here right now, and he's not a believer. He said, God got a plan for you, and he ain't even a believer. Some of the stuff I hear him talk about what he used to do and still do for him to come and say, God still got a plan for you, and he ain't through with you, bro, just like that. When you walk the walk, I used to tell players when I coach, action speaks to me way louder than your words do. When our actions line up with the word of God and we're living out that word and we are focused and nothing else is around us and we're all about what God says we can do, people see that. You don't have to say anything. You don't. I hadn't, I hadn't, I, I'm not the type of person that's going to cope away and, pay, and bang the word in you, but if you give me a door, I'm going to give it to you. But I ain't never, never, ever out of the 16 years I've been there, I, ain't, I never witnessed to my boss. Never. He just watched me. And he saw Jesus Christ through me. 
I didn't have to say a word, not one word. Just like when we go shopping and you see something nice in the store, that's whatever you're looking at don't say anything to you, but it draws you to it. It will. It'll draw you to it. So I leave there and I go home. And I'm in, in my recliner and I'm watching TV because I can't, I can't go upstairs and I can't lay down. So the recliner was, was my bed. And I had teammates that I hadn't seen or talked to in at least 20 years or more. 20 years or more, reaching out, puzzled and amazed that I'm, in the, I'm, I'm at home after three days. And everybody that I talked to Everybody that reached out to me, and all they could talk about was God. That's all they could talk about with me was God. The thing about it is, I've been in the clubs and, and, and at barbecues and drinking and, 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 and partying and clubbing and partying and clubbing with all of them. With every last one of them. And we talked about it. Way different stuff back then. God never came up in them conversations. But God cleaned me up. When I came here in, in 2003, I went back to Grand Rapids to play. And a lot of my teammates that I played with out there, we, we was a wild crew. We was a wild, everything we did was together. We was just a wild crew. But the preciousness of the Holy Spirit, when it falls, when it falls and it get rooted and grounded in your heart and people notice that, it draws them to you. But that's how sin does too, though. Sin does the same thing, but the rewards is different. Sin does the same thing, but the rewards are different. Because a simple fact that people that know me, the way I used to be and the way I am now, if I go home or visit or say I were to go to a, a reunion or something and they drinking or whatever and somebody that don't know me would come up like, hey, you want something to drink? I didn't have to say anything. My teammates are like, no, 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 he don't do that. No, he don't do that. When I was out and I did it, it was the same thing I went, I was out in Austin, Texas. One of my best friends, I'm the godfather of his daughter. We, we have to practice a lot of times. We go and we play video games on, on our downtime. And they, they were sitting in there drinking, whatever. So I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm playing video games. And one of the guys, I was playing with my best friend, one of the, one of the younger guys, he probably been in the league maybe one or two years. He was like, Tebow, you want a beer? Before I could say anything, my friend's like, oh, nope, he good. Nope, he good. We, as the body of Christ right now, are on display. More than we ever been in the last, I don't know, however many years. Yes, we're on display right now. With everything that's going on, people are watching you as a believer to see how you respond. To see how you respond. Me, when I go to work, people talk about, oh, I need gloves, I need this, I need a mask, I said, I need Psalms 91. Well, what about, uh, give me Psalm 91, I can go to Psalms 23 for you too. Either one you want to pick. Because the enemy is using this as a fear factor, a fear tactic. But I'm using it as a faith tactic. Pastor Carolyn said something because I was stubborn doing it. I ain't got to that part yet. She's like, Tony, I know you got faith, but you also got to use wisdom. 
because I was, I, was, I was being a whorehead. When all these symptoms started, this ain't even what I wrote down the preacher about. When the symptoms started, I struggled for about two and a half, three months before I even had this surgery. And it got bad. But to me, when you're, when you're an athlete and you've been in, 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 in pain or whatever and the coach is saying, you know, <laughs> I had a Coach Newton, I'll never forget I was in the ninth grade. I tweaked my ankle or something at practice and I'm laying there and he came over and he said, are you hurt or are you injured? I said, huh? He said, are you hurt or are you injured? I said, all right. He said, I'm just hurt. He said, all right, well, you can get your butt up and get back in the huddle. Or if you was injured, it's a different story. But that's, that, was, that was the mentality I had. Oh, it's just pain. Pain is temporary. I'm, I, I get over this. I will be at work. I will be at work. And my office was, is on the second floor and right across from the, from the health office. And then we got our supervisor's office here. And then it got a clinic wing office that walks down probably maybe 20, 15 yards long. I get a call on the radio, I got to respond to a situation in a dorm with a kid. So I'm walking, not running, I'm walking. And by the time I get at the end of that hallway, I'm out of breath. My chest is just pounding, boom, 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 boom. So I'm standing there like, I got to get over here to get him some support. I, could, I couldn't. I had no energy. None. This went on for two and a half months. I would lose. I would have my, my chest pain. I would, once, I, once I get physically tired, I would get winded. My heart would start hurting and my whole arm would go numb. And I would sit and rest until everything subsided. Then I go to work. I go. I go to the to the dorm and help in the crisis, not knowing if I have to physically hold a kid down. I wouldn't have been able to do it because I was out of breath. We got another dorm. It's four. It's four. It's four dorms. Get a call and the top one, and I know how many steps it is to get there. Seventy three of them. <laughs> it's 73 of them. So I get up the first flight, get up to the second flight, and I'm done. I'm leaning on the railing. I'm like, I, I can't breathe. My arm is going numb. So I let that subside. I go to the next two, let that subside again. Then I finally get up to the third floor. I mean, the fourth floor. Two and a half months, I let this go. So when I talked to the doctor, he I explained and everything that went on. Every one of those, every one of those that I was going through was a mild heart attack. Every last one of them. The worst one that I had, my daughter was at work, my wife was out of town, and I came home I got out of work about 11.30, I got home about 12, put everything down, got relaxed, took the dog out, and just me walking up my flight of stairs, when I got to the bedroom, I laid on the bed and couldn't take no shower, couldn't do anything, and I laid on the bed, and all of this side of me was gone. I, had, I couldn't feel it, my heart was pounding, I'm, I'm in a sweat, I tried and sit up to see if the pain was the side, nothing. So when my wife get home, I still didn't tell her about that until I had that same episode at work two days later. Two days later, I had that same episode at work and I'm sitting out on the steps and one of my co-workers said, you want me to call 911? I said, don't you dare do it. Don't you dare do it. I'm not going to the hospital. She didn't. 
I sat there on that step, man. I had to hold a kid because he was trying to fight another kid. I'm, all I'm doing is just holding him. It ain't like I'm just wrestling with him. I'm holding him. And just me exerting or just holding him sent me into a mild heart attack. You understand what I'm saying when I tell you how clogged I was? So I let him go. I'm sitting on him. I, everybody bring me water. They got a cold towel all on me with icing and everything. I finished work that night. They tried to send me home. I'm not going home. So I finally told, I finally set my wife and daughter down. It was on a Monday. It was a Monday. I got all my testing done. I got my echo, I got the ultrasound, I got all that done. They induced me to get my heart rate up, all that. I'm thinking they would say something to me while I was there. I get in my truck and I'm driving down 87 and my phone rang and it's my wife. And she said, you in any pain? I said, yeah, I'm in pain. They just, they just made my heart rate go up. Yeah, I'm in pain. She was like, you need to go to the hospital. I said, nope, not going to the hospital. I'm going bowling tonight with my bowling league team. So I get home. My wife and daughter, they talking to me. I said, I'm not going to the hospital. I said, yeah, 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 this guy, I'm not going. Stubborn athlete. I'm not going. I'm good. I'm all right. I don't feel nothing. I'm all right. So I finally gave in and said, all right, when I come back from bowling, I'll, I'll go to the hospital. So I go bowling. <laughs> so I go bowling and get home about 9 o'clock that night. And I get home, and the first thing I do, I kick my shoes off and put my feet up on my recliner, start watching TV. He's like, my wife was like, you ready to go? I said, go where? She said, to the hospital. I'm not going. I'm not going. Sorry, but I am not going to the hospital. I'm feeling fine. I don't need to go to the hospital. I'm not going to no hospital. I said, if something would have happened that night, we'll go. God uses people when you least expect it. My daughter comes in the room. My daughter comes in the room. She looks at me. She said, you going to be that selfish? I said, what are you talking about? You going to be that selfish? To not to be around, to walk me down the house, to give me away for when, you get, when I get married, or to hold your grandkids. Turned the TV off, got up and put my shoes on and went to the hospital. My daughter was used by God to save my life. My daughter was used by God to save my life because I was being a stubborn knucklehead, selfish, prideful, don't want to look weak. So we go to the emergency room that night. They do all the testing. So they set me up to do a, uh, the, uh, the stents. So we go in and do the stents. And so me and my wife, funny story, me and my wife are in the back. Every one of my nurses that I had was from Alabama. I said, I'm from Alabama too. She was like, yeah, where you from? So we conversated. One was from Auburn. No, two was from Auburn. One from Montgomery, which is like an hour from my hometown, and another one was North Alabama. And my wife thought that was kind of cute. So I go in. I'm thinking, OK, stents ain't going to be bad. I ain't got to have this big, ugly scar that goes down in the middle of my chest. 
I come out of surgery. They can't put the stents in. And I'm just waking up from the anesthesia. And they tell me we got to do open heart surgery. I lost it. You're not cracking my chest open. I don't care what none of you doctors say. I'm screaming in the recovery room. You're not cracking my, I was adamant about it. You're not cracking my chest open. I just woke up and I am mad. I am mad. You're not cracking my, and, and, and the nurse was like, calm down, calm down. I was like, no, I am not coming down. You're not cracking my, I said, why you couldn't put a stitch in? Y'all said it without a, see, and then I looked at my wife and she just bawling her eyes out. She said, babe, it's too much damage. I said, how bad is it? I mean, and she just said, she was telling me, it's too, it's, it's too much damage. She didn't tell me until I got back to the room and I got where I was, I was fully awake. I said, how bad is it? She's like, bad is bad. I said, okay, I, I, when they say bad, what's bad? Now, this is before they did the open heart. They didn't know I had four of them. They only saw three. So I had 196%, which is the main one that goes down the middle. 96% blocked. Almost 100%. I had two at 86% blocked. So when we sitting there, we talking, I'm like, okay. Me saying, thinking 96%, I'm like, well, I still got 4%, so I'm getting through. <laughs> so, and then I said, well, the other one, I got 20, so that's four. I'm good, I'm all right. Yeah. So the doctor came in, and he, he told me that he was going to do the, the surgery the next day. So I go from... Samaritan over to St. Peter's. And all I could think about is what my daughter said to me every time I got mad. He said train up a child in the way they should go and when they get old they won't depart from it. They may slide a little bit. God knows I did. I was raised in the church. And I, all I could picture was me giving my daughter away on a wedding day. So I go over to St. Mary's, I mean St. Peter's, surgery good, everything, go home do my follow-up with my primary doctor. And he was talking to me, all these doctor turns. I'm like, Doc, you gotta look here. I'm you gotta you gotta break it down to me. I'm 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 I like things simple and explain it. I said, you gotta break it down to me. So he goes out to the office and he brings back this this model of a heart. He said, you see this artery? He was talking about the one in the middle. He said, you see that artery right there? I said, yeah. He said, that's called the widow maker. So why y'all call it the widow maker? He said, that's what kills them. That's what kills you. That's why they call it the widow maker. It makes your wife a widow. I said, well, I'm here now. He said, you shouldn't be. I said, why you say that? Well, a 96% blockage, I should have been dead. People have had massive heart attacks with just 80% blockage of that artery. Mine was at 96. 96. Then he went on to tell me, he said, you were supposed to have a, a triple bypass, right? I was like, yeah. He said, well, you never asked him why they had to do a quadruple? I said, I really ain't thought about it. He said, 
my heart, I guess we're athletes, when we work out, our hearts get bigger than everybody's normal. They call it abnormal and large heart or something like that. And the one, the 80, the, the, it was two of them that was 80. Then I found out the, the, uh, the fourth one was also at 80, but they couldn't see it. My heart was so big, it was hidden over here. They had, that's where the fourth one came from. And, I, and when I used to have pain, when the pain would hit me, that's where it was mostly at. It was on that side. When they did the stents, they didn't see it. But when they opened me up, that's when they found it. So now I got a nine, I got the major one, which is called a widowmaker, at 96%. And then I got three others that's over 85% blocked. And I'm standing here. I'm standing here. I, I told my wife I felt like I was in a Job, in a Job moment, where the enemy had talked to God about me, saying, "Oh, you're blessing him. He's doing this. He got a good job. His family, da da da." And the only reason he's doing it is because of what he had. So I felt like Job. I felt like the devil had a conversation with God about me. And God said, let him prove himself to you. Oh, if I, 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 I heard him physically, he'll deny you, God. <laughs> There's no better place to be than in God's hand. There's no better place to be than in God's hand. I done had the fame, the fun, my childhood dream come true. All of that was great, but none of that compares to the relationship I have with God right now. None of it. None of it. I wouldn't be here, standing here today if it wasn't for my heavenly father. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet every day. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God's word and the promises of his word that I'm provided for, protected and preserved and made whole every single day. I wouldn't be here. I tried to live this life on my own. I did. But I'm in my Job moment and I'm, 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 I'm on my back and all I could see, all I could do was look up. I'm looking up every single day. Not down, not around, I'm looking up where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. But I got caught in trying to do it my own way, Pastor Carolyn. Yeah, me, on fire for God, in the church doing, you know, what I, I can. Normally in December to January at my job, you got four days that plays time and a half of overtime and double time on that holiday. The reason I didn't want to go to the hospital, I didn't want to miss out on it. It's Christmas, holiday, you know how it is. You want to you, 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 you have a big Christmas and do things and be able to do things. So I said, well, I wait till after Christmas, the first of the year. That's, that was my thinking. Just as plain as day, God said, I'm your provider. I supply all your needs according to my riches and glory, not yours. See, sometimes, I don't know about you, I'm just being real and honest with you right now. Sometimes I put God on the back, by, on the back burner and try and do things my own way, and they collapse, and he rescued me out of them every time. Every single time. 
When I tell you, thank you, thank you, Pastor Paul, Pastor Carolyn, and the Tobano family for who you are. My family got a blessing from somebody in this church, paid my mortgage. Paid my mortgage. I was worried about paying my mortgage. And Pastor Paul said something to me, and it still stick with me. And listen to me. Everybody that's sowing, paying your tithes, Praying your offering, sowing seed into other people's lives, you will reap that harvest. You will reap that harvest. Pastor Paul told me, he said, Tony, there's no reason for you to be embarrassed. There's no need for you to be prideful. You got too much seed in the ground. Whew. You got too much seed in the ground. You will be, you'll be protected. You got too much seed in the ground to worry about stuff that's already taken care of. You may not see it. Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. You will reap with if or what you sow. I had two car payments. My house runs on oil and electricity. I got a 21-year-old that's still at the house. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I'm talking to my wife, and she's looking at me, and I'm looking at her. Hadn't missed a payment. Hadn't been late. Hadn't missed a payment on both cars. Had missed all or nothing about getting we were able to get oil, we got food on our table, we got clothes on our back. When I say God provides, I go back to work. I go back to work. And everybody looking at me like, there's no way. There's no way you back to work this soon. There's no, why, why, are you back, are you really, I mean, they were puzzled, they were like, Mr. Boy, they were like, Bo, you really back? I said, yeah, I'm back to work. You, you, you I need to call you, they was, they was literally wanting to call my doctor that released me to come back to work. I was like, no, I want, the, I want the phone number to call the doctor. I get back to work. I get a raise. And I get a promotion. I get a dollar raise and I get a promotion. One of the kids asked, his staff was like, how Mr. Boyd come back like that and he a supervisor? And I looked at him. He said, it's about the grace of God. So them, them, them are the doors that I wait for. When a kid asks me things like that, that gives me the door to share the gospel with them. We got, we got this training. It's called Therapeutic Crisis Intervention. And we teach kids how to cope when they're upset, angry, frustrated, been hurt. I wrote this down. We have the Holy Spirit who is also our trainer. But the thing about me as far as training, I can give advice. It may not be the right one, but the Holy Spirit never misses. He always hits the mark and he's always right and it's always at the right time. That's what we try and do to the kids there, but we miss it. So I'm back to work. So them same steps, them 73, <laughs> them 
those 73 steps, I got to go up. Because now, with me, instead of being me a supervisor at safety and security, now I got my own dorm where I supervise the whole dorm. So now I got to go up these 73 steps. And me, in the back of my mind, only thing I was thinking about is how I felt when I wasn't in, I wasn't in pretty good, I wasn't in, in shape to go up them. I was hurting. So here we go. I'm going up them steps. I get up two flights. It's like, hey, not bad. Get up two more flights. Now that's a, that's the third dorm. I should be breathing a little heavy by now. Something. And I get all the way to the top and go in, and I'm not out of breath. If I did not have that surgery, if my daughter wouldn't have had the talk that she had with me, that was pushed by the Holy Spirit for her to do that, I would not be standing in front of you today. I am not ashamed to say that because I know it was only God in my life, my family's life, that I'm able to stand here before you in front of you today. Don't get me wrong, the enemy tried to take me out years ago. Years ago. Driving up and down highways in Atlanta at three, four o'clock in the morning after being out all night drinking, having to drive from Atlanta all the way back to the training camp, which is outside Atlanta, down 85, where everybody's doing 100. And I'm still here. That's why I felt like I was in my Job moment doing all this. Because he tried to take me out a long, long time ago. Remember being in high school, going to the skating ring on a Sunday night, and we got our parents' cars, and we just got our driver's license, 16, 17 years old, and we drag racing all the way home on a country road with no lights, single lane, passing, going uphill, don't know if anything coming over the hill. Yeah. This is Tony, y'all see, that, that, this is Tony that, that you're looking at that used to be there. No, I wasn't always like this. this. I'm telling you how I used to be. And y'all wonder why my grandmother prayed the way she prayed. She knew. God told her, if you don't pray for him, God, the enemy going to get him. She knew. That's why she prayed the way she prayed. That's why I pray the way I pray for mine and for you and for you. I, 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 I get the work. I get, before I even get on, on that property, I'm praying. Before I leave that property, I'm praying. While I'm not at work for that property, I'm praying. People, this, car, this coronavirus got people scared to death. We have the precious Holy Spirit. We have God's word. We have the promises of his word. The enemy is using this to put fear in this whole world. He got his little foothold that he's trying to put as much fear in this. You got to he is done. That's why he's up in the ante. We're in the last days, people. We're in the last days. We ain't going to be here too much longer. I'm trying to reach as many people with the gospel Amen. as I can. That's my mindset. That should be as a believer. That's how man. It's all about souls. It's all about souls. And don't, don't say it ain't nobody around me. We're walking around people every day that are hurting, that's afflicted, that's worried. 
that, that, that don't think nobody love them. They don't nobody care for them. They just exist in, in a world. They just, they, it's like they just, they, they're numb. You, you, I go to work, I see people, uh, and, and I can see the hurt and the fear and the disappointment in people's eyes. And my heart of compassion, just like the Lord said, you gotta have, I, my heart of compassion for them just goes out to them. Pastor said, a lot of your coworkers going to want to hear you preach. And when I ask people before all this, everything got on quarantine or whatever, they will come to me and be like, I heard you preaching on the 29th of March. I'm going to be there. I can't tell you how many of my staff said that. They taking off. I had staff, I had staff come to me and say, if I'm working that day, I'm calling out. I'm calling out. When you walk the walk, you're going to draw people to you for God. Will we mess up here now? Yeah, and they're going to see that, and then they're going to see how we really bounce back and say, you know, apologize or do the right thing. That, that speaks more than anything I could ever say is my actions for God. I pray that you get a hunger and a thirst to win the loss for Jesus Christ now more than ever. We're losing too many people that don't know God. They dying and going to hell every, every single day. I can't tell you how many opportunities I done missed to talk to people, especially friends back home that I went to high school with and drove and, and, and did all these sports and everything. Hey, one of my friends, the thing about it, before he died, when I went home, I asked about him. I said, I ain't seen my my friend uh, Andrew, who's calling Petey, but his name was Andrew. I ain't seen him in years. And I wanted to see him. I didn't know why. Successful. Trucking company owned his own trucking, owned a semi truck and trailer company. Very successful. I get back up here two weeks later. He's driving his Cavor- a Corvette down the road, loses control, dies. God wanted me to share the gospel with him. He was just like me. He was raised in the church as a kid, just like me. Just like me. We was, he stayed right across the street from me. We was in Easter, Easter uh, programs with white suits and big blow, bow, blue. <laughs> the heels on the shoes or stacks, we call them. We all grew up together. So now every time I go home, I don't miss, I'm not waiting on no opportunity. I'm not waiting on opportunity to miss anymore. I'm not. Same with, same with my attitude when I leave this place. I understand why when y'all go to grocery stores or wherever y'all be, you're in pastor, you looking for an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to be. I understand that now. I do. So if I didn't give you anything today, I hope I gave you some incentive and encourage some boldness. Oh, let me, I want to read this. Boldness. A willingness to take risk. Act innovatively. Confidence and of courage. The quality of having a strong, vivid, or clean appearance. It is the opposite of fearful, fearfulness. Implies a willingness to get things done despite the risk. A bold person may be willing to take risk, shame, or rejection in social situations. To bend rules or intricate or politeness. 
A bold person may be willing to take risk. Hunger and thirst is what I pray that falls on us every single day. For you that are watching, I pray that you are blessed by my testimony today. I pray that you are, I pray that you are encouraged to do what God has called you to do, to step out on faith, to be bold and not let the enemy distract you. I thank you, Father God, right now that you have doing you have doing a mighty, mighty work right now in people's lives that that hunger and thirst for the things of God is falling on them right now, Father God. They will not miss another opportunity when you open up a door that they can share the gospel to whoever it may be. There's a hurting, dying world in front of each and every one of us every day. Help us, Holy Spirit, not to miss that mark. Help us to, to, to spread and be bold enough to do as you commanded us or obey us, uh, uh, to, to not, for us to obey what you want us to do. Not just sometime, but all the time. People are leaving this place that don't know you, Lord. We want to reach those people, Lord. Whoever you put on our heart, help us to obey your will. Let your will be done, Lord. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. This virus, Lord, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Woo. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. Your will, Lord, not our will, but your will be done. God bless you. I love you. I love you. God loves you more than I can love you. Thank you. but as I was one of the people sitting out here listening to this message today, Tony kept talking about his blockage it was 96%. And I thought in the spirit, what is our personal blockage that's keeping our heart from functioning at 100%? And I think for each individual, it could be different. It could be 96% unforgiveness. It could be 96% doubt. It could be lust. It could be anything in our life that was keeping us from giving 100% of our lives to the Lord. I think everybody could examine themselves and they know what is it that's keeping them back. What is that stubbornness, as Tony was saying, that stubbornness in the spirit that's keeping them from being and functioning at full capacity of what they, where they should be. And if everyone's heart was at that 100%, what could we accomplish in the natural with people around us? And as we're going out today into the world, everyone's heart, I believe, is 96% fear, as Tony was saying. So we should go out with the peace of the Lord on us so that it's moving through us into the atmosphere around us. So as the worship team plays today, just examine yourself and say, Lord, what is it? What is my blockage? What is blocking my heart today from functioning at 100% for the kingdom and for the Lord? Amen. Thank you, Tony. Thank you.
we're so grateful for all you've done in this service this morning. Holy Spirit, continue to move upon our lives to remove every blockage that might rise up because of our past, our fears, our worry, our anxiety. And Father, every day create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. God, allow our mind to never be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by your word. Fill us with your glory. Fill us with your presence. So that as we go out into the world, they see the light of Christ all around us. Father, I believe more than ever now that people are going to see the glory of God shining on us. That we're going to be like human torches. They're going to look at us and see the glory of God shining all around us where darkness is trying to overtake us as we go to the stores, we go to the gas station, if we're still going to work, that the glory of God will just consume all around us like that burning bush where there will be holy ground all around us and as people come close to us, the glory of God will come upon them. The world is so open to hear about you, Father. The world is desiring for a Savior to save them from the despair and the worry and the fear and the anxiety. Your word says you never leave us or forsake us. I just thank you for the people of God. All around the globe, the people of God, the church of God that's out fighting every day. That whatever part of the world you're in, that the glory of God would shine brightly. And Father, we just commit this service to you. This time in your presence, everything that was said by our brother Tony, that it will continue to play over and over again in people's hearts and minds, in front of their eye gates, in their ear gates, that they will hear and receive the word of God, that nothing is too hard for you, God. There's no mountain that can't be tossed into the sea. There's no storm that can't be calmed. There's no sickness that's greater than the name of Jesus. And we just give you glory and honor and praise for all that you're going to do starting right now, Father, and this entire week and every day what you're going to do in the church and those around us, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name we say, amen. Well, church, we love you. We're so glad you're a part of this. Continue to share this gospel with the world around you. We hope you'll join us again on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And again on Friday night for the youth and the pillars and the college group at 7.30. We love you. We bless you as you go out. Plead Psalm 91 over yourselves every single day. Speak it out. And believe it with your heart. Be blessed as you go today.